weight. It's always been a critical factor in aviation. The heavier the craft, the more power and lift you need, and the more fuel you consume. Nowadays, we can use advanced composite materials to build lighter, faster, more durable aircraft. But it was a lot tougher in the beginning. The earliest heavier-than-air flying machines were made of the lightest materials available, usually wood for the frame and a cloth cover. With a few variations, the model persisted for many years. Then, following the First World War, aluminum became the material of choice, and several all-metal craft were produced over the next decade. But the shortcomings of aluminum soon became apparent. It was hard to form it into smooth and complex shapes. It was subject to corrosion, and aluminum became fatigued when worked or stressed. Slowly, many of these problems were addressed. New alloys were developed, and airframes were built with complex and expensive structural reinforcement. By the 1930s, wood had virtually disappeared from American multi-passenger and military aircraft. Even as the fortunes of aluminum soared, composites were making inroads into aviation. Modern composites rely on a matrix that can be molded into shapes. That actually happened back in 1907 with the invention of Bakelite, a liquid phenolic resin. In early applications, Bakelite was combined with weak reinforcements such as sawdust, paper, or cloth. These phenolic resin composites had some serious limitations. They were relatively weak and brittle. The first uses of Bakelite in aviation would have been for small parts like insulators and control knobs inside the craft. Then, in 1930, Owens Corning developed fiberglass composites. Early fiberglass still used phenolic resin, so the composites were still brittle, but they were quite strong. This strong and moldable fiberglass was not suitable for aircraft parts, but it was perfect for creating parts. Douglas Aircraft Company used fiberglass composites as forming die tools to produce prototype metal aircraft parts, and much of the industry followed. The approach of World War II saw several advances in material science, including polymer chemistry, New synthetic resins, including polyester resin and epoxy resin, eliminated the brittle matrix problem. This new generation of composites was ready to fly. The war years saw composites spread throughout military craft. Fiberglass air ducts, engine covers called nacelles, and radomes to protect delicate radar electronics. Wartime metal shortages gave the composites industry another boost as the U.S. government began ordering new training aircraft with composite airframes. Fifteen years later, the war was long over, but global pressures were building. The Cold War and the space race were hungry for new technology, and new technology demanded new materials. A breakthrough came in the early 1960s when fiber was produced from boron metal. With the addition of an epoxy resin matrix, this boron epoxy composite was the first ACM, Advanced Composite Material. Because of its expense, boron fiber composites have seen limited use, almost entirely in military applications, including the horizontal stabilizer of the F-14 Tomcat and the primary structural member of the B-1 bomber. Another ACM developed in the 1960s was carbon fiber composites. Carbon fiber is stronger and lighter than fiberglass and much less expensive than boron fiber. It was a perfect fit for both military and commercial aviation. Carbon fiber composites have been used extensively for internal structural parts and exterior skins in the F-117 stealth fighter and the B-2 stealth bomber. 
In commercial aviation, both the Boeing 787 and the Airbus A350XWB use carbon fiber ACMs for over 50% of each craft's structure. Another reinforcing fiber that's currently used in aerospace applications is aramid. The best known aramid, Kevlar, comes from a family of fibers that can absorb and dissipate an enormous amount of energy. Aramid composites are often used for impact protection, light armor, and to reinforce helicopter rotor blades. Composites are made for aviation, literally. They are the perfect designer material for an industry that is ever-changing, ever-seeking new challenges. Light, strong, stable, flexible, chemical resistant, heat resistant, shock resistant, even bulletproof. In aerospace, if it can be dreamed, it can be built. Thanks to composite technology.